Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Elliot Grove, the founder of Raindance and Biffa, and to welcome you to the nominations announcement of the British Independent F Film Awards. Now, 20 years ago, it was a very humble affair. We'd been planning and thinking about doing this. And then one day, a woman walked into my old office over here in Soho and said, what if we gave you 500 pounds a year for the best debut director? Uh, what would you do with it? And I thought, well, that's kind of cool because we have not only awards, but a cash prize. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Douglas Hickox Award, and it's why today we have Miss Annabel Hickox. She deserves a round of applause because without her, I wouldn't be here today. Oh, that's very limp, British, come on. <clears throat> now, we have to do thanks today, first of all, to the Biffa voters. Um, they are a group of dedicated, rigorous, and incredibly passionate about discovering new talent and the very, very best in British independent film. Biffa has been expanding the pool of, of voters, and now they have more than ever before. And believe it or not, this year they've watched over 350 British films entered into this year's competition. So thank you to the Biffa voters and the screening committee. I'd also like to give a real special uh, call out and thanks to all the journalists here today, because one of the goals of Biffa is to get the word out about Biffa. Now remember, in the UK, we've got fantastic art and the Turner Prize. We got fantastic authors and the Booker Prize. We got fantastic music on this small island and we have the Mercury Prize and you journalists help us let the world community know that Britain is, should be known for film and that by the way is why we do Biffa to shine the light on all the people coming out here. So thank you journalists. Uh, Biff has changed a whole lot in the last 20 years, changed a whole lot in the last three years, and that's down to Dina Manley and Amy Gustin. They'll be really embarrassed now, but they have really changed and shaped Biffa. And again, they deserve from me personal thanks and gratitude, and hopefully from you too. Now, Biffa wouldn't be possible with a whole bunch of partners. We're here today in a really cool room, thanks to the London edition, Biffa's hotel partner, for hosting the nominations announcement. And we have tons of supporters and sponsors this year. Big thanks to All City, BBC Films, the BFI Network, Black Magic Design, Champagne Tatinje, Creativity Media, DCM, Film 4, Hypergram, Intermission, Kodak, Mac, Swarovski, and Variety. And yes, those were in alphabetical order. How cool is that? Big thank you. Now, we've already announced the Variety Award that's to the iconic British actor Gary Oldman. And in the next few days, we're going to announce the recipient of this year's Richard Harris Award. So keep your eyes tuned. And we also have to announce the new host for this year. And it's Mr. Mark Gaddis. Mark has had a long and varied career as a writer and producer behind the camera, as well as being an award-winning actor and published author. Mark is probably best known as the co-creator of the hit BBC series, Sherlock, as well as writing all of the series today for the new Doctor Who the new modern one, not the old one, and we'll see him next as a performer on the big screen in Yorgos Lanthimos' next film, The Favourite. So Mark, you're carrying on in a terrific tradition of hosts here at Biffa, and we're really excited to see you. We've also got this year, we've got new craft categories, nine whole categories celebrating all the below-the-line people who work so hard on the, uh, in British film. 49 crafts people have been nominated for these new awards, and the winners will be announced on Thursday, the 23rd of November, two weeks before the Biffa ceremony, right here in London. Now, 
This is the moment you've been waiting for, the nominations of the British Independent Film Awards, 20th anniversary, 2017, and to read out the nominations and let you know what they are and dispel all the suspense, we have two really amazing uh, performers here. One is Maisie Williams, who is a brilliant television and film actor. She won awards and plaudits for her lead role in Carol Morley's The Falling, and will next be on many, many screens, voicing the new Ardman feature, Early Man. <laughs> joining, joining Haley is last year's most promising, uh, joining Maisie, I should say, I just gave it away, oh my God, so early. Uh, joining Maisie is last year's most promising newcomer award, Miss Haley Squires. And she won that last year for her incredible perform performance in I, Daniel Blake. And since then, she's been on stage in Cat on a Hot Ten Roof alongside Sienna Miller and Jack O'Connell, and will next be seen starring in BBC One's The Miniaturist. <laughs> Maisie, Haley, take it away. Welcome. Morning, everybody. Oh, is there a phone ringing? Tough crowd. Uh, okay, right off we go. The nominations for Best International Independent Film, sponsored by Champagne Tattinger, are The Florida Project, Get Out, I Am Not Your Negro, Loveless, and The Square. Best British Short Film is supported by BFI Network, and the nominees are 1745, Fish Story, the Entertainer, Work, and Ren Boys. The nominees for Best Casting are Shaheen Baig for Lady Macbeth, Shaheen Baig and Leila Merrick Wolf for God's Own Country, Sarah Crowe for The Death of Stalin, Sarah Halley Finn for Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and Debbie McWilliams for Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Next is Best Cinematography, sponsored by Black Magic Design. The nominees are Ben Davis for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, David Gallego for I Am Not a Witch, Tat Radcliffe for Jawbone, Thomas Rydelsheimer for Le Leaning Into the Wind, and Ari Wegner for Lady Macbeth. Okay, costume design now. The nominees are Dinah Collin for My Cousin Rachel, Susie Harmon for The Death of Stalin, Sandy Powell for How Not to Talk to Girls at Parties, Holly Rebecca for I Am Not a Witch, and Holly Waddington for Lady Macbeth. On to Best Editing, the nominees are Johnny Burke for Williams, David Charup for Jawbone, John Gregory for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Peter Lambert for, de for, for The Death of Stalin, Joe Martin for Us and Them. Next is Best <laughs> Effects, the nominees are Nick Alder and Ben White for The Ritual, Luke Dodd for Journeyman, Dan Martin for Double Date, the effects team for The Death of Stalin, and Chris Reynolds for Their Finest. Nominated for Best Hair and Makeup Design are Julene Patton for I Am Not a Witch, Jan Sewell for Breathe, Nadia Stacey for Journeyman, Nicole Stafford for The Death of Stalin, and Sean Wilson for Lady Macbeth. Best Music is next. The nominees are Carter Burwell for Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Fred Frith for Leaning Into the Wind, Matt Kelly for I Am Not a Witch, Paul Weller for Jawbone, and Christopher Willis for The Death of Stalin. Okay, here we go with the nominees for Best Production Design. Jacqueline Abrams, Abrahams for Lady Macbeth, Christina Casali for The Death of Stalin, James Merrifield for Final Portrait, Nathan Parker for I Am Not a Witch, and Eve Stewart for Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Next is Best Sound. The nominees are Anna Burtmark for God's Own Country, Macon Hansen for I Am Not a Witch, Andy Shelley and Steve Griffith for Jawbone, the sound team for Breathe, and Joachim Sundstrom for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And now for Most Promising Newcomer, sponsored by the London Edition, the nominees are Naomi Yaki for Lady Macbeth, Harry Gilby for Just Charlie, Cosmo Jarvis for Lady Macbeth, 
Harry Mitchell for Chubby Funny, and Lily Newmark for Pincushion. Next is the Discovery Award sponsored by Rain Dance. The nominees are Even When I Fall, Halfway, In Another Life, Isolini, and My Pure Land. The nominees for Break. For, break <laughs> For Breakthrough Producer, sponsored by Creativity Media, are Gavin Humphreys for Pincushion, Emily Morgan for I Am Not a Witch, Brendan Mullen and Katie Jackson for Bad Day for, Bad Day for the Cut, Fola Cronin O'Reilly for Lady Macbeth, Jack Tarling and Manon Ardison for God's Own Country. Now debut screenwriter, the nominees are Alice Birch for Lady Macbeth, Gabby Chappie for Their Finest, Johnny Harris for Jawbone, Francis Lee for God's Own Country, and Rungano Nayoni for I Am Not a Witch. Next is the Douglas Hickox Award for Best Debut Director. This year's nominees are Deborah Hayward for Pincushion, Francis Lee for God's Own Country, Thomas Napper for Jawbone, Rungano Nayoni for I Am Not a Witch, and William Oldroyd for Lady Macbeth. Nominated for Best Documentary are Almost Heaven, Halfway, Kingdom of Us, Uncle Howard, and Williams. Next is Best Screenplay, sponsored by BBC Films. The nominees are Alice Birch for Lady Macbeth, Armando Iannucci and David Schneider, and Ian Martin for The Death of Stalin, <laughs> Francis Lee and for God's Own Country, Martin McDonough for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and Rangano Neoni for I Am Not a Witch. Now for Best Supporting Actor, the nominees are Simon Russell Bill for The Death of Stalin, Steve Buscemi for The Death of Stalin, Woody Harrelson for Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Ian Hart for God's Own Country, and Sam Rockwell for Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And Best Supporting Actress, the nominees are Naomi Aki for Lady Macbeth, Patricia Clarkson for The Party, Kelly MacDonald for Goodbye Christopher Robin, Andrea Riseborough for The Death of Starling, and Julie Walters for Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. The Best Director nominees are Armando Iannucci for The Death of Starling, Francis Lee for God's Own Country, Martin McDonough for Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Rangano Neoni for I Am Not a Witch, and William Oldroyd for Lady Macbeth. This year's Best Actor nominees are Jamie Bell for Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, Paddy Considine for Journeyman, Johnny Harris for Jawbone, Josh O'Connor for God's Own Country, and Alex Sekaranu for God's Own Country. On to Best Actress, which is sponsored by MAC, and the nominees are Emily Beecham for Daphne, Francis McDormand for Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Margaret Malubwa for I Am Not a Witch, Florence Pugh for Lady Macbeth, and Ruth Wilson for Dark River. And finally, the nominations for Best Independent, for Best British Independent Film 2017 are The Death of Starling, God's Own Country, I Am Not a Witch, Lady Macbeth, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. So that is the 2017 Biffa nominations, and you can get a full list from Freud's at the back of the room. Thanks very much, everyone, and we'll see you there on Sunday, December the 10th. <laughs> Thanks. So, first question, what do you make of the nominees? I'm thrilled for everyone uh, nominated. I think that this is such a huge opportunity for so many younger actors that have, uh, are up for the Newcomer Award. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting for all those people and, and Biff is a huge platform. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where they go after this with their careers. 
The really nice thing about Biffa, I think, is the fact that each of the films nominated, it isn't just specific to do with acting or directing or the screenplay. The films, I think it really gives a recognition to every person that is on board making the film. Mm -hmm. Across the board, in front of the camera and behind the camera, it feels like a real solid team effort for each of the films. And I think that Biffa is very good at recognising that. Excellent. Just answer one more question. What does British independent film mean to you? I think it's exciting the stories that are told and the characters that are written for women. Um, I, I've, I find I find uh, I find the films made in Britain, the independent films made in Britain, um, they just speak to me. Um, and it's so amazing to be a part of that. And, and coming to the end of Game of Thrones, I'm really excited to be able to get back into more. British independent film and I just think there's no better place to be mm. um, and uh, yeah so today is very exciting. <laughs> it's, I think it's yeah vital British independent film is absolutely vital in, in our industry I think without it we'd, there'd be a lot of heart and soul lost mm -hmm. and I think things could become quite superficial as we've said before and yeah. you know kind of for entertainment purposes only rather than talking about the, the human experience and, and immersing people in that, which I think British yeah. independent film does. And what do you think makes British independent films stand out from the crowd? Um, I, think, I think our uh, fearlessness, as you sort of said, that, the, bravery, the fearlessness, yeah. yeah, the bravery when, when you know, talking about uh, pretty sometimes controversial subjects um, uh, and 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 are daring to go there, I think. Um, and so many films, you sit down and you, you watch and you immerse yourself in, in a, like a fantasy story, but really it's just very reflective of what's going on all around you. Um, and I think British film does that so well. I agree, I agree yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, bra the bravery of it, I think, is very, um, is, is very important and is, is the thing that makes it stand out. The, mm -hmm. the, and, and that kind of goes across the board with the storytelling, but also the you know first time directors and first time writers and newcomers as actors there's like a risk that's taken that wouldn't be taken elsewhere which is really important mm -hmm. what do you love about making films um well i'm about to actually start making films i just started a production company so uh i guess like you know it's been really interesting hearing people's stories about making movies and and how long it takes and so i'm about to get a little taste of that myself but i think if you're passionate enough about anything that the passion that's what i really love about making films because um, people with, with british independent film it, it takes so long for a movie to get made that by the time you're there shooting everyone's there because they really want to be there yeah. and they really want to tell that story and there's no front I think people are there because they love making movies and, and the passion I think in British independent film is just skyrocketing yeah the the, the collaboration is the is the best thing about it for me I, I feel like what Maisie said of everybody being there because they really want to be there's no every film nominated today if you speak to the people involved they will probably at some point have called it a passion project mm -hmm. and so to have that I think you can't fail I think that's a that's the thing the I mostly drove about it. Yeah, absolutely. Best way to make, make films. Last question. Biffa is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I know, it's old as me. <laughs> What's been your favourite um, Biffa winner of all time? Of all time? There's so many, I think. Uh, can I say a couple? Do yeah. I, I mean, I, I have an ultimate. I love filth. I love hunger. I love movies like that. I think uh, just like real, real raw dramas um, but my favourite that gets me every time and I probably watch it once a month would be Never Let Me Go beautiful beautiful film um, and uh, yeah I think that was the first independent film that I watched where I was like I want to I want to make stories like that um, it really caught me I've got a few as well mine would be Sweet Sixteen Mr Loach my favourite Ken Loach film is Sweet Sixteen um, this is England. Mm -hmm. is was is a huge influence and continues to be. There's so many. Yeah, but my <laughs> ultimate is Neil by Mouth. I think Neil by Mouth is probably. I mean, I know it's in a certain realm. I think Neil by Mouth is, in terms of representing a certain part of Britain, I think it's, if not the best, it's one of the best British films ever made. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris.